Thank you very much, Speaker. As the only visually impaired senator in the House, it was difficult for me to know if I would catch your eye, but I'm glad that I have. And I thank you for the opportunity to also, with some of my colleagues, oppose this motion. Mr. Speaker, I've heard a colleague use the book of Nehemiah to prosecute her support of this motion. But what exactly did Nehemiah say when he was urged to retreat? What was Nehemiah's decision when people were trying to distract him from his work? Mr. Speaker, Nehemiah said, I am doing a good work and I cannot come down. And that's what Gen Z are also saying to the executive and to members of parliament, that they are doing a good work, standing up, speaking for themselves and for their colleague, young, young men and women who are out in the streets, Mr. Speaker, and they cannot come down. And neither should we in this Senate. How can we go on a recess? Why are we going on a recess? We have just come from a three week recess period, Speaker. Why do we need two more weeks to reflect? This is a house of reflection and we have to do it while we're sitting in these seats and when we're speaking in these microphones. That's what we're here to do. Parliament stands to represent its people. Parliament, Mr. Speaker, does not close to run away from its people. I want to urge and persuade those who have not spoken yet to also concur in opposing this motion, not because of disrespect, but because of respect for the young men and women who have lost lives, who are now muted because they cannot speak due to yesterday's horrifying scenes. We can't go home. Are we trying to say that renovations of windows and offices are more important than speaking for bloodshed and lives lost yesterday? We cannot, Mr. Speaker. And I, as a young person, as the first young person speaking to this motion, as a youth in this uh, house, I am speaking for the youth who are outside of this house. We cannot go on a recess. It is wrong. And it would be completely insensitive to do so. Mr. Speaker, darkness fears democracy. I rarely wake up in the morning wishing for my eyesight to be restored. But what a sight to be able to behold. This last week had me aching with desire to see my fellow youth in the most spectacular display of patriotism, camaraderie, and putting up a first-rate masterclass on demanding that governments be held to account for the entire world to see. And yes, they have seen. But unity, Mr. Speaker, has been violently gunned down in the streets, not by men, but by monsters who have no concern for human life. Although this government has demonstrated that lifeless Kenyan bodies are not to take precedence over their punitive finance bill, young Kenyans have looked their oppressor dead in the eye and shown them that when it comes down to the wire, there are only two times to be brave, when you feel like it and when you don't. My profound disappointment to the current government and its forceful assault on uh, crowds of innocent youth speaker by its nefarious police officers who have gone rogue on unarmed young citizens peacefully exercising their constitutional right towards an uncaring, a corrupt and wasteful government in their eyes that has turned its back on them cannot be emphasized enough, speaker. The brute force used against young unarmed protesters reveals the operating system built into the fabric of today's government. And when they kill us, Speaker, they're killing themselves. The arrogance from some of these top government officials has been outrageously condescending to young people, disgusting and reminiscent of narcissistic abuse. You call us wankers and clueless children of plunderers. Then you say you're proud of us for making our voices heard peacefully. Then abduct defenseless children using state machinery and escalate a peaceful demonstration of young people with phones, twigs, and water bottles in their hands into barbaric scenes of bloodshed. 
Why don't these policemen punch in their own weight class, Mr. Speaker? That's my question. I've been asking myself, would they come into parliament and try and abduct or take on a Ledama or Lekina? Would they be able to have the balls to come and abduct and uh, violate the safety of uh, Samson Sherarge? They wouldn't, Speaker, because they know that all they're doing is showing a brute force using their shields and using their armor and using their artillery, pouring it on young defenseless Kenyans. And you know, clinical psychologists will tell you that narcissists will first love, love bomb you, then they'll manipulate you, then they'll gaslight you into believing you, their lies, then they devalue you. And finally, speaker, they discard you once they have what they want. We young people have seen every single stage of these narcissistic behaviors in this government. And since they complained that over 8 million of us did not come out to have our voices heard in the 2022 elections, Mr. Speaker, we are here now. And an estimated 25 million came outside in every corner of the country yesterday to say that we reject this finance bill because we would rather die on our feet than live on our knees. We are not the generation who are silenced with every carrot dangled in front of them, Mr. Speaker. We are the generation that asks questions and demands accountability because we understand that we are rich and only if the money that we refuse tastes better than the money that we accept. Gone are the days, Speaker, when governments can rely on using methods to numb their people through controlling the media, through controlling education, and controlling the church, which used to be houses of God, and now have turned into dens of thieves. So, Mr. Speaker, we're saying as young people, go ahead, push that narrative all you want about our international financier. That's a scapegoat, because you won't find one. Unity is our financier. Liberation, passion, justice, anger, disillusionment, and dissatisfaction are all our financiers. This is the reason why, why I oppose going on recess, Mr. Speaker, especially at such a sensitive time in our country. Mr. Speaker, this finance bill is without a doubt designed to be esoteric. I believe that it's relied upon for citizens not to understand this document in full. The Prime Cabinet Secretary said a few days back, if the finance bill 2024 fails to pass, the implications are serious. It could result in a complete shutdown of the government and signal a vote of no confidence from the public. These and many statements, Mr. Speaker, are being peddled by government officials and none of them are true. They tell the public how ominous the failure of the passing of the bill will be, but that's not true. Yet, Mr. Speaker, if the bill were to pass without the consents of, of, uh, of, of the people, it will, it will split the entire nation. And that's not what we want to see. Mr. Speaker, the president still has an opportunity to not put pen to paper. The constitution clearly says that he has 14 days to assent to any bill that comes from parliament. And he can still, right now, today, in this moment, decide not to sign this bill into ascension. Mr. Speaker, 